So welcome today to this session on how to sell yourself or your business using an infographic. My name is Stacy Wixaw. I'm the director of Massachusetts Public Library, and we have Hannah Morgan here with us who wrote the book on how to create infographic resumes and will share her vast knowledge with us. But this session was made possible by a Google grant. So I'm just going to share a, a quick tip about Google with everyone. Um, bear with me as I share my screen. So Jude, I said the same thing. It's great to see Stacy without a mask. <laughs> yeah, this is the actual face right here. <laughs> So um, how I don't know if many of you realize that you can use Google to create an infographic. So what you will need to do to be able to do that is go to Google Draw. And I, I don't know why, but I cannot seem to find the Google Draw icon when I go to my Google Drive um, account. So I go in this way, I, I search it, Google Drawings comes up. I click on it. Oh, we can't see what you're search. Can you see my screen? I can see your screen, but I didn't see you type in anything. Oh, did... I, I simply put Google Draw in the search box in Google. And it's the first thing that will come up on the list is Google Drawings. And I just clicked on it and it brought me here. But I don't see anything. You're still on Google. I'm still on Google. You don't see my screen. No, I, I didn't see that you typed in anything That's there. That's odd. You still in Google? And we will try this again. Okay, let's try it again. It should have worked. Tell me what you. So see. the tip we're going to show your desktop might be the trick to or set in, or entire screen if you see it that way. What, what do you see right now? We see your cursor on Google. On like the Google search box? Uh, it's going all over the place, but yeah. Are I'm you on a screen and it looks like a piece of paper with very faint gray checks? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. Let me. Yeah, we're seeing your Google home screen. You're seeing my Google home screen. We'll try again. So sure when you select it, it for me. try this. Oh, this that looks better. better. That looks better. Okay, so I don't, I'm not quite sure why the other one didn't work that I clicked on, but that's okay. So you see up here, I, I searched Google Draw, and then Google Drawings is first thing on the list, and I just click that, and up pops this. So this is Google Draw, and this is where you can make an infographic. It's totally free, and whatever you create will be in your Google Drive. The easiest way to find it is to look in your Google Drive. In Google Docs, it'll be like you'll have your most recent items that you've done. It'll be right there, um, but you want to make sure you title it something. So I'm just going to call it infographic Oops. demo. And that way I'll be able to find it easily in my Google Drive. I can just, even just searching it in the search box. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, and this is tricky, cause I gotta move you guys out of my way, um, is you're gonna to want to go to file and you're going to want to, where did it go? document details, that's not the one. Page setup, that's the one I want. You're gonna to go to page setup and you wanna choose custom. And if you're making an infographic that you wanna be able to share over lots of different platforms, the best um, format, first of all, you wanna change it to pixels and the best size is 800 by 1600. That's what Google recommends. So you do that and it changes it a bit. So you're working on a long skinny rectangle, which works well on a cell phone or a tablet or even a computer screen. 
But if you don't like it, you can always change it. You don't have to stay within this parameter, but it is what's recommended. So once you do that, um, then you can do things like, I'm sorry guys, it's really hard. I have so many toolbars <laughs> covering things that I need. Um, you can, no, that wasn't it. You can um, search the web for pictures. And let's say you were doing an infogra infographic and you wanted to have little people to represent things. You could type in people icon and you get lots of different icons. Let's say I like this little guy right here. I can click him and I can insert him. And then I can size him and I can um, make more, I could pick more of them, make lots of them to rep, let's say I wanted each guy to represent 10 people because I had a huge number of people that did a particular thing that I was trying to show off in my infographic, I could do that. Um, basically, you'll use that a lot because infographics are all about pictures. Another um, tool that you're gonna wanna be able to, to to use is, I'm gonna move this little guy down and I'm not really trying to make a actual infographic. I'm just giving you a really quick um, idea of how this works. So, whoops, if we go to insert, you can insert a text box and then you can call um, your infographic something. I'm just gonna call mine test because it's not really a real one. You can make the text bigger, just like you normally would. You can change your font um, to something that you like. You can go over here and you can center it within your text box by using that. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff you can do and I could take up the whole hour, <laughs> but I just wanted you to give us get a sense that you could use Google to do this. It's free, you could make tons of them and save them in your Google Drive. And don't worry if you don't quite know how to use this because I'm going way too fast because I will be sending you a link to a tutorial that will go much slower and be able to guide you step-by-step step through the process of using this. Um, and you can try it. And I know Hannah's going to introduce some other tools you can use, and it's it's good to have different tools, and you can get a sense of which you like the best. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing, and I don't want to um, use up Hannah's time because she she's the expert. So. I want to thank you for showing just a little bit about how powerful Google Drawing is. I think that it's another one of the tools that we have access to. And uh, when we were talking earlier, um, Stacey, you know, there are several tools that I'm going to be sort of showing people and giving them a choice of. And now we can add Google to that other option as well. I think it is. It's a matter of what you feel comfortable with. Some are 100 percent free. Some have some limitations. So it just knowing what, what you want to do and what's going to be the best tool to do that. And that is what we're going to be talking about. Right. So I um one of the questions that was asked, and I don't know the answer to this, but when you select an image from Google, is that um, royalty free attribution free? Yes, if you use their site and you're selecting icons from there, it should be royalty free. However, if you go out on the web and just randomly pick pictures, which I think you can do through there, then you have to be careful. But okay. if you're looking for the icons, the icons on Google are safe. Okay, great. And that's usually the case, right? That you can get those for free. So I want to, uh, I'm going to take over and uh, share my screen. And I want to thank you all for being here. And I'm really looking forward to teaching this. So as, um, as Stacy mentioned, I did write a book, <laughs> but I've never actually taught a hands-on workshop about this. I've had like a one hour or two hour period of time to really introduce concepts. So this is going to be not only fun for me, but a huge ex fun experiment for you all as well. So I'm looking forward to this. Um, so <clears throat> welcome.
um, this is what we're going to talk about today. Um, this really quickly, like the, the so. Uh, it sounds like it's a lot, but it's really simple. The significance of the infographics, brainstorming, common sections, identify an accomplishment, identify skills, stories, interests, what's your value proposition and what story you want to tell. So that's like the plan for today. And that's really ambitious for just one hour, but we're going to have some fun. And I am going to highly recommend that you participate as much as you can. I know in the past we've done a lot with chat. We're going to be using um, so the annotate button and we'll, if for those of you that aren't familiar, we're going to have a chance to play around with that. So that'll be fun. And the other thing is there's going to be a little bit of homework. There's, we just won't have time to do all of this self uh, analysis and sort of the brainstorming in this one session. So there's some other areas that I'm I'm going to ask you to brainstorm on between now and our class next Tuesday. So it'll, it'll summarize some of the points that we made today, give you some more things to brainstorm and move forward from there. So I'm, I'm hoping that's going to be okay with you, right? Let me just tell you, the traditional resume, I've always been a hater of, and I'm not really a hater of much, but there's, there's some huge problems. By default by the human resources standards, all resumes are supposed to look the same. Well, how does that work for us? We don't want to look like everybody else. And let's remember that resumes are really difficult to write. None of you, well, actually, there are a couple of you have been taught formally how to write resumes, but the majority of us don't know how to do that. And it's overwhelming. And it, it's, oh, by the way, it's really hard for us to write about ourselves. So there we go. And the other thing about resumes, for a lot of us who are sort of creative, resumes are restrictive, they're impersonal, and they're boring, right? So I, I just, they, they serve a purpose, but then let's break some rules. Plus, if you ask five different people for their feedback or what they think a good resume looks like, guess how many different answers you're going to get? Everybody has their own perspective and their own belief on what a good resume is. Even some of the top resume writers, they can't agree on a lot. So then somebody's telling you to do something a certain way um, based on their preference. Everybody has personal preferences. Here's the other reason resume, resumes stink. The average recruiter spends 7.4 seconds scanning a resume to make that initial go, no go determination, according to the latters. Do you know how long an attention span is of a goldfish? eight seconds. So the recruiters are looking at your resume to make that go, no go sort of initial determination, less time than a, a goldfish has focus. So if we can all agree, there has to be a better way to cut through this noise. There has to be something more that we can do to be memorable and stand out. And I think one of those solutions is an infographic. Because Infographics are, are fast and easy to understand. We see them on every road sign, right? And we know what these mean. We know they, they, they become universally understood, right? So we don't need to see the words turny curve ahead. We don't need to see the words no smoking. We know what these things mean, right? We can instantly in the brain processes a picture much faster than it processes words. That's scientific. And images are much more likely to be remembered. We all know these. We don't need to see the name typed underneath it. The uh, uh, Apple icon is iconic, um, which was a mouthful to say. The Nike swoosh, we all know that. So certain images that if we can pin them back to us or include them in our infographic, like a company logo, we all will instantly recognize that company logo. And instantly we think, oh, Apple, Hannah, Hannah worked at Apple, right? So you don't even need all of those words. And here's the other thing. We are seeing infographics used everywhere to share vital information. Why? Why are we using infographics to share vital, really important information? Because people don't read. <laughs> like we, we don't read, we skim. And so if they can use 
um, dashboards to convey important COVID information, then we can absolutely use an uh, infographic to convey our career history. So here's some more data. Infographics are the most effective medium for learning and training information. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But back in 2017, that's what they found based on the research. And 65% of business B2B business marketing B2B marketers are using infographics in their marketing campaigns. So, you know, if businesses are using it, trainers are using infographics, um, they're if they're on every street sign, they're using it for COVID dashboards, then why, why can't we use one for us? I think we can. Here's the other thing, content marketing, which is a big fancy term, it's just marketing, right? For job, the thing about this is when you use infographics to in your content marketing, the reason we are doing this is to create brand awareness, to educate our audience, and to build credibility and trust. So if you're a business, that's why you use content marketing. And those are the exact same things that we as job seekers or business owners who are creating an infographic for our business or for our own personal brand of our business, all the same thing. So there's my case for why I think we should all be here. What I'm going to take you through over the series of these, the next four workshops. Um, today we're doing the brainstorming and mapping your story. We're going to then look at choosing design elements that go with the things that we're trying to show. Then we're actually going to create it um, using some of the tools that we are going to be, that we're going to talk about. And then I have to talk to you about, okay, now that you've created it, what are you going to do with it? Posting and sharing it. Because it's great if you create an infographic, but the whole idea of creating it is to share it with the world. I don't want it residing on your desktop or on your Google drive that doesn't do anybody any good we got to get it out there it's got to circulate so people can discover you and it ah so one of the things that did i skip through it really quickly let me go back hold on i wonder where it went there was a slide and maybe i deleted it i don't know maybe i hit it anyway it showed you an infographic i'll <clears throat> i'll show you some in a second but we don't even really need to see infographics yet because this is what's really important. We need to brainstorm. We need to think about if, when, when I create my infographic, what are the kinds of things that I might put on my infographic, right? If you're going to talk about your skills and your qualifications and your career and how wonderful you are, what are the different things that you want to include? So we're going to walk through some different areas, starting with easy, getting to a little bit harder, um, that I want you to brainstorm ideas with. So if you do not have a pencil with you this very second, I'm going to ask you, and I should have asked you in the very beginning, but I'm going to ask you to get a pencil so that you can brainstorm because you've carved out this one hour period of time to do some work on your infographic resume. So I want you to be able to write down some ideas for some of the things that we talk about. When you get the handout tomorrow or whenever Stacy sends that, you will see there's spots for you to do some more brainstorming, but I don't want you to go back and reinvent the brainstorming. I want you to have already done some because you're here today with us. Um, so the first thing, which should be fairly easy, I want you to, um, and I'm going to show you how to do this in a second, I want you to share your interests and hobbies. And I don't want to hear anybody say, oh, but my interests or hobbies are not relevant to my career, or I don't want to share them. Unless you have some X-rated career interest or hobby, you should be sharing it here. We're just brainstorming, and with brainstorming, there's no bad idea. So. For those of you who have not used the annotate feature before, I'm going to tell you how to get there. At the very top, I'm th oh, oh, at the very at the menu bar, one of the options that you see next to one of the options before you get to more is a pencil that says annotate. And when you click on that, you will see a little a set of options. I click on the text, and when I click on the text, I can type my hobby. Did you all, can you all see my fishing? Oh, look at you guys go. Awesome. 
So the only thing that we want to be careful of is that we're not putting it where somebody else's is. And I'm going to give you a little time because some of you are figuring out, oh, well, that works, that doesn't work. What I would recommend is to click on the text box. Excellent. There we go. Rather than trying to write, because I think that will be easier. Gardening and cooking. Ooh, I wonder who that is, Kathy. Is that you, Kathy? So, Kathy, can you get even more specific if it is you with gardening and cooking? What kind of cooking and what kind of gardening? Because a lot of people say they're into cooking, but what they really mean is that they can follow recipes out of a recipe book. But other people say, oh, I'm really into, um, you know, making exotic cakes or whatever it is. So if you can get more specific. Oh, hi, Robin. Okay. It's Robin. Get more specific. And if you're into gardening, what kind of gardening? Crafts. Be more. And if you don't want to share here, I get that. But crafts is too general. If there are specific types of crafts that you do, I want to hear about it. Gardening flowers, that needs to be what kind of flowers? Are you in a zone two that you can grow really all kinds of wonderful flowers? Or are you in the zone four, five, like the us up here that only can do like the hardy kind? Sewing, do you make quilts or do you make clothing or do you make, um, what's it called, fabric art? Oh, I love that. Knitting hats, travel, reading mysteries. Where do you love to travel to? Get more specific there. This is so much fun. Animal welfare. Wonderful. Is there a, spe a specific kind of yoga that you can specialize in? Um, finisher, finish furniture refinishing. That's awesome. This is so much fun. Climbing the high peaks. I see somebody, there's, a, there's some that are overlapping there, but I saw someone was into climbing the high peaks of the Adirondacks. That's wonderful. Watercolor and acrylics, yes. What kind of things do you paint? Kayaking, roasting coffee. Oh, wow. Isn't this fun? Why is this so cool? It's like a little window to your soul. I'm learning so much about the people that are here. I don't even know who you are, but I, I immediately start thinking about, oh, people who take spin classes. Well, that's really cool. Nigel, are you trying to write and having problems? Click on the text box. You guys are doing great. French language, gym, fitness, food, and culture. So the French language is great. The gym and fitness, is that just an overarching or are there certain classes that you really like taking? And food and culture, is that like traveling to Spain or Madrid to experience the food and culture? Or is that going to New Orleans to have that food culture? Um, excuse me, the more specific you can get, the better it is. Because at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is not only, you guys are doing great. Um, we're, we're trying to give people enough information that they can envision what we're actually doing, right? And in doing so, there's some sort of an emotion that all of these words are going to con con uh, bring up in somebody. Like somebody who uh, is um, reading that you have climbed the high peaks, they may say, oh my gosh, my grandfather used to high climb the high peaks and I went with him. So they're immediately going to be interested in seeing that about you. Um, somebody who mentioned animal welfare, maybe my, my animal came from an animal welfare group and I've done volunteer your work myself, I'm going to reach out and say, oh my gosh, we've got this in common, right? So it's an emotional and looking for ways to build something in common with people. You all are awesome. There's some really cool hobbies here and that wasn't hard, right? Cats, meow. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next, but I'm warning you, I've just saved this um, so that if you all forget and you need it, we might be able to retrieve it, okay? But now, so is everyone done? Because I'm going to clear it and move on to the next one. Oh, okay. I'm clearing and moving on to the next. So our next area for brainstorming, oops, that's not right. 
our next area for brainstorming is a fun fact or something interesting. So this actually may tie into your hobby or it may be something professional. What's some fun fact that not many people know about you? My favorite that I used to tell all the time, I don't know if I've said this to you all, is that I told David Letterman to shut up in a movie theater before. And that works with a certain age group, but now it's sort of aging out. Like a lot of people are like, who? David, huh? So um, anyway, that's my little claim to fame. Um, that's my fun fact. Oh, you bred many horses. That's very cool. Oh, I didn't know they were allowed to get married. Really? A twin. Oh, these are all so great. You guys don't type on top of each other. Oh, these are great. Traveled and worked seasonally for 10 years. I want to know where you traveled across the U.S. So an extra in Awakening Line Ministries, does that mean that you they would have called you if somebody backed out at the last minute or did you actually get to go on some of those? Um, minute, oh, 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 I don't even, mini series. I was thinking it was a ministry. I don't, Awakening Land, I don't know that. But it's very cool that you were an extra. That's cool. So you've been on TV. I rode camels off of two different um, places. That's Riding camels is something memorable. March in Wisconsin, marching band. Ooh, they have a really good marching band too. Using public transportation. That's definitely something that many people would not admit to. And it's a wonderful thing that you're doing that because you're saving all kinds of resources. Something out. Oh, you hung out at Studio 54 back in the day. Worked in a network TV news, CNN, years ago? Wow. So here's my question for you all who are sharing these really amazing things. How many, why, why would you not, why would this not be something you would publicly share? Why, why are these things being hidden um, that they, they're not even on your LinkedIn profile. They're, they're nowhere, right? Like you're holding this great information in. Why? Why are you hiding this? Because this is great stuff. Okay, let me see if I can see what's going on in the chat. I can't see the chat. Anyway, maybe because I've got this going on. Um, Degrees of relationship. Yes. Is that what we're talking about? That this is all because we're looking to find that commonality with somebody. Okay. So the, did you write all these things down? Did you write down your thing? Oh, tend me whales. That must have been amazing. I have Welsh heritage. Okay. So the fun fact, keep note of this. Maybe you've got multiple fun facts. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this. And then we're going to move on. Oh, I've got to clear it too. Um, we're going to move on to the next set of um, fun facts that we're going to share. This gets, it gets a little harder as we move forward. Okay. Call out stats. And actually, this could be sort of um, based off of your fun fact. So, um, it, I can't remember who said it, but somebody said that they um, traveled for six months. So the call out stat is six months traveled across country or lived in, uh, six years, lived in Wales for six years. It could be that you saved a company money. It could be that you have some sort of um, cl other claim to fame that is somehow numerically um, numerically oriented. So um, it could be like some, one of the things I used to tell people all the time is that I have over, what is that number? I have over 40,000 Twitter followers. Like, like really? Yeah. And I have over 100,000 followers, one over 300,000, 100,000 followers on LinkedIn. So um, those are fun. And they're sort of important to me because they help build credibility about what I'm good at. So those would be some of my call out stats. Yes, travel to eight countries and 17, uh, 17 in FVW bug. So the call outs, that's actually more of a fun fact. But it could be that traveled to 12 countries in at age, you know, in a, a VW bug. Number four hired when the company was um, 
when the company was first started. 10 consecutive years and a two in two digit growth. Great. Over 3000 physician used a program, a program that you created spent 70,000 uh, to but kit in my first project on my own. Once spent 70,000 to butt kick in my first project on my own, maybe. Uh, th so that's a little, needs some fixing. Um, led a $5 million project, yep. Have owned three different businesses and sold all at a profit, awesome. A two, dual citizenship, said so what are those two things. Um, you guys are doing some good things here. So think about it, you could have multiple call out stats. So you could have some that are a little bit more fun and then more that are business oriented, like 10, the number of people, 10 is the number, right? And that's the number of people I managed, um, oversaw or ma managed in my last job or direct reports or whatever. It could be 12, the number of industries that I've um, exper had direct experience working in. So there, there can think about any kind of a number. Um, 36 hours, the amount of time I saved by implementing a new program. Um, so these call out stats could be anything um, that you want. Oh, <laughs> so I'm not really into kids either. So I immediately saw that. I'm like, oh my, that would be, that would be a lot. So the number six, six that you um, had to manage during this summer camp, absolutely. Six is a lot. It's one on six. Those are bad odds. Um, so <clears throat> what, one of the things that I didn't, well, I see one person saying 23 years self-employed. And that is huge kudos because um, most people can't, that's, uh, most people don't last that long in self-employment. So that's awesome. But what I didn't see, and I'm glad I didn't see this, is people that who have said um, 20 years, 20 plus years in, as a sales executive, like that I don't want to see because that's not really selling you. That's not really a stat. It's a, it is a stat, but it's not a stat that you really want to broadcast because when, when you and I hear that somebody, um, and even, being self-employed requires you wear way, way too many hats. So that that's a little bit of a different animal. But when I hear someone has spent 20 plus years as a sales executive, I'm thinking, well, can't teach that old dog a new trick because they know it all. Um, so really the message that you want to send is these are, because we know what employers are looking for. We know what somebody is looking for. It's not necessarily the breadth. It's not the the number of years you've in the job that's important. It is how well do you perform? So um, it could be that you, you know, in sales, the number thing that you've been a top performer for 12 years in a row. That would be a great call out stat. Oh, wow. Project managed 23 software lo localization simultaneously. That's impressive. These are all great things. So you, you feeling good about some of these call out stats? The other thing that I will tell you is that you have lots of call out stats. And the reason I loved and wanted you all to share them publicly, even amongst ourselves, is so that um, other people can get ideas from what they're seeing here, right? Oh, I didn't, I, I managed lots of different projects. Maybe I should talk about that. So all of these are really wonderful and can give other people ideas. Does that work? We're still brainstorming, right? Okay. We're still brainstorming. So let me um, save this. I'm going to, oh, I always forget to clear it. Hold on. Clear all drawings. Woo. Looks scary, huh? Now we're going to go to the next brainstorming session, which is tools and technology. Okay, so what tools and technology do you have comfort using? And I'm not going to ask you to quantify whether you're a pro or you're a novice. That's a, a conversation for another time. But what tools or technology do you, are you comfortable using? So Zoom, Microsoft Office, um, 
I think you can add LinkedIn in there because that is a tool and a technology. What other tools and technology do you know that you've used in work? WordPress, good. Canva, oh yeah. Oh, who's got that whole long list? I don't even know about some of these like Jira and Confluence, but awesome, that's great. Google Meet, Zoom, LinkedIn, Publisher, Prezi. Oh, is Prezi still around? Used to be huge. Salesforce, Arasana, great, great, great. WebEx, Evernote, Drupal. I'm sort of looking around the, these. Oh, wait, hold on. I didn't mean to do that. Going back. Um, Blackboard, great, 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 great. Oh, I wonder who just put that one up, Stacy. <laughs> awesome, HTML, CSS, MLS, great, Ob absolutely. And in the world of real estate, let me ask you, isn't there, a, don't they use a customer management system there too? Maybe it's Salesforce. Digital microscopes, absolutely. You guys are very talented. And your mobile phone is a wonderful thing to know how to use, right? So that they're thinking, if you think about the the way how powerful a mobile phone is today, like all of the apps that we're able to use, I would even go, so the person who says um, your phone and your mobile phone, I would even add um, some of the apps that you use there marketing automation. And so I'll, I'll challenge whoever just typed in marketing automation. Like that's a whole, there are a whole bunch of tools involved in that. And if I were going to be hiring you, I'd want to know what tools you are familiar using. Because here's the deal. Once you speak one language, one piece of software, you can learn many of the others because they're all so similar. HubSpot, Net Promoter, Scores, great. Oh my gosh, you all, Marquito, wonderful. You all are very talented. Slack, what's up? What? Yep, Telegram. Loom, yes, I love Loom. Yep, Loom. Duolingo, who's learning no languages? Isn't Duolingo for languages? Who's doing that? That's awesome. All right, so remember, a, the learning management systems spell out what those are. And if you've used a specific um, customer relationship management software or CRM, um, specify that even if it's unique to your industry, other people in industry may know it. Oftentimes um, companies have homegrown solutions. So if you say customer relationship management and then paren say, you know, whatever the private name is of that, that, that helps. You all are wonderfully technically savvy. And I think we've all, isn't this true? Haven't we all had to get more technically savvy um, as the year has gone by? I mean, none of us, well, very few of us a year ago were really all that confident on Zoom. And now look at you, you're annotating. Who would have thought? This is awesome. Okay, so um, I am going to um, save this just because. Clear it, clear it, and we're going on to the next one. And this one gets a little bit trickier. I told you they they get harder as we go along. This is work-related processes and procedures. By industry and by role, this is very different. So let me give you an example of what I mean. If I were in accounting, um, I would list that I know accounts payable, accounts receivable, I know month end, I know general ledger, I know uh, some sort of budgeting, blah, 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 blah. I don't speak accounting, but there are certain work-related processes or procedures that I know how to do. So on the last screen, we saw somebody talk about the fact that they knew um, marketing software or marketing something or, or customer relationship management. So when you're doing customer relationship management, what are the steps involved in that process? So forecasting is a good one. Agile, Scrum, yep, those are all work-related processes and procedures. Marketing automation, workflow design, implementation, yes, perfect. Um, yes, that's great. 
add a scrum PMP budgets schedules. Um, be more specific when you say budgets. Are you creating or are you managing budgets? Oh, you guys are all really great. Forecasting and pipelining, absolutely. I keep having to move stuff around. Data analysis, yes. What kind of data are you anal analyze, analyzing? Analyzing what um, and why are you doing that? So that you're you're more than just doing the data analysis. You are probably extracting the data and then massaging it to do the data analysis. Um, distributed team management yes absolutely so if you're managing a team that's one thing that you do but there are thousands of other things that you do like you have to make sure that the sales um, cycle is being updated and that you develop commission structures and all of that stuff too yes assessing physicians and facilities running review panels committees budget development reporting logic models oh yes excellent 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 User prototyping, great. Automated testing and QA, absolutely. You guys are smart. See, I told you it was getting a little bit harder, right? <laughs> um, but keep thinking. Maybe I'm hoping that this is um, getting you thinking. Test planning, test cases, reporting, replication data science, machine learning, QA, absolutely. And I will say all of you that are in this kind of world of data analysis or um, project management or in testing and uh, user prototyping, being able to create infographics is so important because data visualization, which is why we have infographics in the first place, is huge, right? So developing some of these skills is really going to be a career booster for you because you'll have some sort of additional familiarity with how to create these. Building strategic framework, absolutely. So, and, and these are just like single instances. So building a strategic framework is just one of the many things that you do. There are other things that you do as well. So when we're, yeah, when you're designing a piece of software, there are gates and phases that you have to know about, right? That are um, you have to meet, and there, there, pro, there, that gates and phases is a, isn't that sort of a term or technology people use in software development? No, maybe not. Um, course creation, absolutely, and then then it's the time that it takes to build that. When you're using court, when you're building courses, there's a lot of that you have to know about adult education and, and online learning theory, right? To, for training theory. So mention that kind of stuff as well. I'm having fun. This is like <laughs> great. Awesome. Okay. So does this get your wheels turning about some of the things? You may not know what you're going to do with this yet, but it gets you thinking about the ways you can talk about some of the things that you've done. Okay, so now I've got a um, clear. Oh, wait, I didn't save first. Hold on. Hey, Gary Wood, good to see that you're using chat for that. Thank you for doing that. Um, okay, so next we have industries um, that you are familiar with. So oftentimes people overlook the fact that they have worked in four different industries, but yet that's so important because it shows your ability to transfer and learn and learn in new industries. So even if it's just one industry, what is the one industry that you worked in that you know? Um, great, higher ed, government retail, medical device, Software as a service, yes. And the, even if we're thinking about leaving our current industry, we're fed up with it, we're done with it, there's a lot of crossover oftentimes between your past industry and, the, and, and your future industry. So just brainstorming doesn't mean you're committing and locked into this. We're just brainstorming. Government, energy, housing, workforce development, not-for-profit, regulatory, quality improvement, health, social sector, metal manufacturing. Oh my gosh, we've got some really, we're all over the map here. This is awesome. Med tech, fintech, hardware. I can't read, it's getting blocked. 
aerospace automotive industrial rail yes 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 biotech life sciences diagnostics wow see how really talented we are here's the other reason it's fun to think about um listing the multiple industries you know is that nobody almost nobody will have the same exact combination of industry experience as you have. So that automatically makes you unique, that you are one in probably a very few number that have the this combination of industry knowledge that when when you bring that forward with you into a new organization, they reap all the rewards because you know how to speak those different languages. Awesome. Wow, there's some really vast amount of experience that we've got here. That's awesome. Okay, good, 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 good. I'm going to save this. Thank you for playing along. I'm going to clear it and I think Oh, I've got one more, though I don't know you can actually do this while we're here, but it's a wonderful thing to think about. Testimonials, whether they're from LinkedIn, you already might have a testimonial that somebody wrote you on LinkedIn or part of a testimonial that's really wonderful and you're like, wow, that's great. I don't want it just to sit on LinkedIn. People don't always read those record, those testimonials. Or maybe you got this really excellent email from a boss that said, because of the work that Elizabeth did, blah, 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 blah right? Um, think about that. Or it may have been a customer or a client. Without Hannah being a part of this process, we never would have closed the deal, right? Where you, if you think about some of the emails you've received um, or the other things that you may, that the managers may have sent, even colleagues may have sent, professors may have said, um, people may have written about you on LinkedIn, any of those, any of those are testimonials that give you credibility. Well, because we could say all day long, I'm a really hard worker, right? But nobody's going to believe you. They want to hear somebody else say it. So seeing a testimonial um, that somebody else has written is a form of endorsement. So thank you. Let's talk, and on this page, let's add awards and recognition. So Oh, great. Awesome. So because I forgot to include a slide for awards and recognition, if you've won any kind of award or um, prize um, that you've been nominated to a committee, that you've completed certification in any particular software program knowledge, um, add awards to this as well. Um, awards and recognition. Great. Uh, over a hundred patents? Are you serious, Mr. Mr. or Ms. Patent Holder? That's amazing. Um, great. Do you get certified as a knowledge translation professional? Is that a certification you can get? In the world of technology, there certainly are a lot of certifications. That's absolutely true. Um, there you go, Miss First Zoom in the PLS, the public library system. That's amazing. Um, I know there's a lot of overlapping with the text, with the messaging. Um, it's hard when we have so many people to each person have a segment. I apologize. Um, if you typed your in and once you've typed it and you've left the screen, you can't go move it that I'm aware of. So we're just going to have to deal with a little bit of that overlapping. I, I apologize for that. If you do notice and you haven't clicked off of off your text that you've embedded, um, if you can go back and move it, that would be great. But otherwise, um, just be careful before you leave your your thing when you're. I think it's the last time. You can use, <clears throat> if you see somebody puts text and it's overlapping yours and you're still writing yours, oh. you can use the little um, dots you'll see on, 
on the dotted line of the box, there's bigger dots. Oh, you can you can move your text around using that, so you can oh. move it out of the way. But after it's posted, I don't. Yeah, I don't think you can do it. anything after it's posted. And I don't certainly don't want to clear this because it's great stuff. You all, right? Isn't it sort of fun to recall some of this stuff? And what I'm hoping is that you've been scribbling this down on paper as well, right? And I'm going to give you, uh, Stacey's going to send you a handout that's going to give you a spot to sort of translate all of this information into one spot because oftentimes, when we sort of look at this information all together, things pop out at us that we would not have recognized before. So let me save this. Clear. We're going to move in to the another way of thinking about some of the things that you would want to brainstorm and put on an infographic and the overarching idea of an infographic is to replace words with pictures right so. If you we're, we're going to try and find ways to do that that are creative and new and, and innovative so in order to be able to find something to replace with a picture, you need to be able to tell a story, right? So one of the stories that I want you to think about and maybe even jot some notes about because I'm going to ask for a volunteer that we're going to unmute, but I'd like you to think about recall a time at work where you did something that just made you feel really amazing. It could be as simple as unjamming the copier at work, right? Because it all fell on your shoulders to unjam this copier and get your work to the client on time, whatever. Or it could be some thing that some process that you initiated that was and ended up being rolled out across the entire organization. Or it could be that you um, stepped in to so solve a customer, help a customer or a patient with a problem that they were dealing with and and they were so grateful and they got through the system better because of your help. It could be the fact that, you know, you w pulled an all nighter and found that problematic code problem in the, the coding of the software that you were developing and that allowed you to get the project done on time. And, and for some of these, you might say, well, it happens a lot, but there was that one time when you remember it and it feels good. That's the story that I want you to remember. Some of these are pretty easy to remember. Some of them take a little bit more time and effort and more brainstorming. And guess what? I've got just the fix for you because in the handout that Stacy's sending you, all of the there's all there's a chance for you to brainstorm all kinds of different scenarios that made you feel good. Um, so you'll have that. But um, once you have gotten your story, you remember that wonderful occasion. Think what I want you to do is think about putting it into over there on the right, the star format. What was the situation? What was going on in this thing that made you feel good? What was the task or the problem or the challenge that you were being asked to overcome or you had to overcome? What were the actions you took? The first thing I did was this. The next thing I did was this. The next thing I did was this. And then what was the result? What happened once you took those steps? What got fixed? What was better? What was improved? The result was. For any of you that um, have done any kind of classes with me or any kind of career, uh, career development and working on star stories, you're familiar with these because they're the foundation of how we answer interview questions. So you're getting a double whammy mm -hmm. here. Not only are you going to be better able to answer interview questions when you get the interview, but you're also going to have some good fodder for your infographic as well. Um, so any, does anyone have a story that they feel comfortable sharing with a group um, that would be in the STAR acronym format and that would be about a minute or two long? It's hard, oh, how am I going to say, if you can raise your physical hand, I will sort of monitor Oh, Gary. Hey, Gary. You're the first person I saw to raise your hand. Uh, we're going to unmute you. Good afternoon. Hi, 
Hey, Gary. So for all of you that are listening, you're going to listen intently on Gary telling his story. Um, and if you want to annotate while he's telling his story, you're more than welcome to do that. What I want you to be listening to as Gary tells his story is, what do you know about Gary? What is he good at doing? What kind of person is he as he tells us his story? Okay, so whenever you're ready to go, Gary, we would love to hear your story. Uh oh, you ready? All Gary? right, I'm ready. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Get her, let her rip. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so an electronics manufacturing client lost focus on their implementation of an ERP system and the project stalled. The informal project plan included the implementation of advanced modules and the implementation team needed revamp. So I reviewed the project assumptions, the plans and the staffing, and I made recommendations to the client to restart the project. I interviewed stakeholders, reviewed software modules, redesigned the project plan and made recommendations to management. I was then selected to lead the new project implementation. The results were we implemented an ER RP system in 90 days. And um, I have a testimonial from the president of the company. Gary reviewed our stalled Oracle ERP project. He made several su suggestions to get us back on track, including using a building block approach. After approving his project plan, Gary and his team implemented the system in 90 days. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. You, <laughs> wow, that was awesome. So as um, as you and were talking- Thank you for Star Stories many, many years ago. <laughs> I know, see, they still work. So part of this Star Story is, and for those of you that were listening, a lot of what Gary said, if you're like me, may have gone over your head, but you still walked away with a basic understanding of some of the skills and and the kind of person Gary is from that one little story. Think about how much we now know about him just from that one story. And so the reason I, I'm so glad he shared that and the reason I'm wanting you for homework tonight it, to think about your stories is because each story you tell conveys so much more than just the words on the page or whatever we're hearing. They, they're packed with all kinds of really juicy, important things about you. And the trick will be how to tell that story on the infographic resume, but we're going to we're going to cross that bridge once we get it. I think the important fun part of this is definitely making sure that um, you take the time to develop these stories because they're insightful and valuable. So thank you, Gary, for sharing your your story. Um, I've saved that and now I want to go on to because I know we're, we're near the end here and I want to make sure that we get to the very end. I'm almost done. Um, Hannah, yes. really quickly, um, we had some two questions that I, I think we should have answered. Um, okay. One person wants to know if the star story needs to be recent that you use and another one is wondering what if the star story could be considered a bit controversial? So I want you to develop those stories, whether they're current or old, doesn't matter because it's an act of brainstorming. And, and I'm not guaranteeing that you're going to use that story, but I want you to get that story as well as others. Of course, it's always best to have recent stories as well as older stories, but but all of them are good stories. And when I say, when I hear somebody say controversial, um, oftentimes we feel the need to make this story controversial. It doesn't need to be controversial, right? You're, you're putting the emotion in there. It is fact-based, right? Decision-based. Um, if it's morals, ethics based, then that's something that you can choose whether or not to tell. But we all have stories and the key is, um, how do we make this a fact-based story without inserting our emotion in it so that it might become more controversial than it really is? 
So um, this is sort of my wind up, uh, the wind down wind up. What three things can happen when you create content online? Does anyone remember? From the earlier part of our conversation today? I don't know why. I can't see the chat. Brand yeah. awareness. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, brand awareness. Yes, brand awareness. Educating. Yeah. Credibility and trust. Yay, awesome. So there's I a prize notes. for you, Richard. That's wonderful. I, I took notes. <laughs> Good. So what three things and this is personal, so there's no right or wrong here, but what three things that we talked about today are you really excited to share about in your infographic resume? I don't know. Am I seeing anything in the chat? Oh, there goes Richard again. Okay, Richard. Accomplishments, measurements, um, endorsements, testimonials. Okay, great. Um, I think fun facts, just uh, to lighten things up a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, great. Thanks, Jude. So one of the, this is sort of a trick question. When would you use an infographic resume? It's a trick question. Anytime. So would you, you can use anytime, did somebody say anytime? So would anytime, you, yes. would, would you submit an infographic resume through an applicant tracking system? No. No, 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 no. No, because we're bypassing that whole process right, of applying for jobs online. This infographic resume is a, a marketing effort that doesn't need to exist within the job application world. It is anytime you are networking, anytime you meet somebody, it's something you push out on social media. Um, it's You could bring it into an interview. What a wonderful place to present your infographic resume if they haven't seen it already. Um, so you could use it in almost in an unlimited number of occasions, but it's great marketing. And so when we think about marketing, that's social media and, and all those people who have marketing experience like I really want you to think about this okay if we were trying to get this message out about our company what platforms how would we do it without spending a lot of money um, and we have we the job seeker have access to many of the same platforms and tools and resources so unlimited it's un there are no boundaries to what you can do with your link with your infographic once you've created it. So we'll talk more about that stuff. Um, so Stacy is going to send out the handout when she has a chance to do that. I, and we have to be empathetic because Stacy had a lot of snow today, as we many of us did, and she was working remotely. So um, that's why she's not wearing her mask. Today. I hope you're okay my sharing that with about yeah. yeah that's um, so when she has a chance to, to get everything back and running, she'll get us that. But by next week, when we all meet up back up together, I just want to make sure that anything in that handout that you needed to complete, um, it's really self-assessment. We can't tell our story until we know what our story is going to be. So all of that hard work that you put into assessing and, and identifying these things is going to make creating the wireframe, which is what we're doing next week, um, that much easier. Okay, that good. Who's excited? Was this today fun? Did you walk away with some new ideas? Hi, Jude. Good seeing you. Wave. I wish yes, I could see thank it. you. <laughs> yes. Good. Does anyone find this liberating? Like anyone is really creative. Anyone really creative that has challenges? Um, does this feel more liberating, more free for you? More free. It is because it's been the first time. Wait, wait, say that again, Nigel. It is because it's been the first time for me to do anything like this. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, good. This is the workshop. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, yeah, it's good. Okay. Then I hope it's going well for you. 
Yeah. Okay. So I know that you all have, you're all very busy. You've got things you need to do. Um, oh, I should. Um... I just want to point out that if you, any of you in this class are looking for a job and you make an infographic, it could really help you sort of take control over your interview situation. If you bring it with you, you know, you've already got this document that's highlighting all the things you really want to talk about, which is pretty useful. It is very useful. Um, for so I'm, I'm, I'm wait, wait. I'm trying to do something here, and I'm feeling a little um, in the <laughs> in the chat. Actually, what I'm going to try and do for all of you before you leave, I'm putting my email address in chat here, and so. Um, if you need to ask any questions that we didn't have time today, my email address is in the chat. So if you want to save that or write that down, feel feel free to reach out to me. Great. So everyone's got my email. Um, next week. Um, We'll be here at two o'clock, same time. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Stacy, that I need to share? I don't think so. Just um, remember that I tend to share things right in the description under the YouTube video, which will be the recording of this meeting. Um, look in the description, there'll be handout links and you will that's where you'll find Han Hannah's handout and like a link to that tutorial on how to use the Google um, draw tool to make an infographic. Maybe you can play with it a little bit. Great. So awesome. I'll see y'all. And I'll probably send everybody the link again before next time, because just in case anybody loses it in their email, it happens. Okay. Great. Thanks, awesome. everyone. I can't wait to, to, to work, to, to work on this wireframe because we're going to talk about what kind of uh, infographic element is best going to represent what you're trying to say. Um, and then we're going to sort of think about, okay, how are we going to structure this on the page? So it's going to be really fun. And then the third, the next time, the third meeting is where we're actually going to get into that technology and play around with it. But this is what designers do. The, the, by the time they get to the technology, the actual software they're going to use to develop it, they've done everything that you're doing. They've they've identified, they've brainstormed, they've wireframed it. In other words, they've sort of mapped out an outline. And, and so uh, we're following the exact same process designers use. So it'll be fun. Awesome. Yay. Have a great week, everybody. Bye, everyone.